you're writing about your life and your experiences and your feelings and other people are, are always going to have the most uh, effect on you in those aspects, you know. Nothing else really does it in the same way. went from a song to an album when the lyrics started to be written, because the first thing I wrote was the theme on the classical guitar. I'd just play it a lot, and then it would sort of on its own lead into these other songs. So here we go, with my faith in my hands where they should be. Airplane, take us all away to New York City. Music grit, record press novels about the human condition or stories about people mainly are interesting. It's just so wonderful to, <laughs> to be in somebody else's head while they're just obsessing over this feeling for love and, you know, and, and recapturing a love that they once had. I think that's probably why people would like to listen to an album like Lison. It's like a coming of age album. And yes, there's a love story in there, but it should not be the focus, you know. Of course, she gets the title because it's romantic to do that. But that's not really the point of the album. The point of the album is a bunch of nobodies in San Francisco get handed the golden ticket and get to go to the chocolate factory and be rock stars in New York.
an album about my life. You know, what it was like to see your best friend from a few years ago who completely betrayed you and you know, what, you know, what it's like to grow up. My inspirations are an unexpected thing, and it and it is a great feeling for sure when it when it happens. It's like releasing like a pressure valve. It's not the kind of thing you can really plan or anticipate. You just kind of have to be inclined to to like allow yourself to emote. Writing songs has only really happened since living here in San Francisco. I kind of romanticized this city a lot because having lived every place, it becomes very important to have a sort of home. I probably romanticize it way more than other people that maybe grew up here. So the coming home um, reference always ends up being back to here. Doing it on my own allowed me to handpick everybody that's in it and have total creative control. It would have gotten sidetracked or, you know, it just, it wouldn't have been a pure vision like it is now. It would have been a girl's album where, you know, which means all kinds of other ideas come in. This album is a real attempt to, to do something very daring and very true to myself, you know. Not everybody's gonna like these little flute 
solos and you know the sort of baroque vibe of the record and that's fine it's also not going to be the kind of music i'm going to make for the rest of my life you know hopefully people like it i mean you always want people to like what you you know what you like you want to feel like you're not a lunatic for for thinking this is beautiful music It was the literature that really spoke to me. John Updike's books were like some of the first books that I got really into. Well, like the Rabbit series was one of the first uh, series that I read, and I began. I started them in uh, when I lived in Amarillo, and I lived there for nine years. And it's the story of this guy that is supposed to be sort of calming down and behaving himself, but he wants to run away all the time. And it, and you know it, it disrupts his life and causes all kinds of pain to other people and, and himself. But he has to do it. And it, you know, I, for me, reading it was like, it was sort of like daydreaming about leaving Amarillo. It was my, it was my opportunity to sort of sample those feelings myself. About a year later, I wrote um, this other song, Part of Me. Well, I wasn't thinking about expanding on the album at all. I just was thinking about the relationship aspect of it again, because that had kind of come to a close at that point. It just made a lot of sense to me to include it at the end of the album as an epilogue. Such a great What if I'm just a bad songwriter and everything I say has been said before? Well, everything to say has been said before, and that's no.